Bam. And a loud child screams as we begin our session of Tale of Three Dragons. What's going on, guys? I said before I wasn't going to do the clap, but the clap, it's part of the, like, gathering of power that is being a GM. Tradition. It's, yeah, sacred tradition. What's up, guys? The time has come for another episode of Tale of Three Dragons, our big, awesome, super patron game, Ross Tiki. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all your support. Last time we explored more of the CQ Rainforest, and we are getting ready to move over to a temple. Before we do that, though, evens, Tarask, odds, Anru. Well done, my friend. Hmm. <laughs> well, just need to find the campus leader and take him out. I'm kind of just like, not much of interest happened between now and then. We saw a very venomous snake, but other than that, it's just kind of keep moving for now you guys did kind of move in such a way as to not see actually truthfully finding using farron to fly up and see the temple was those very wise very good take a hero point and on if you would take us home murder <laughs> just murder nothing around here need to kill something but uh no beyond that not really that bloodthirsty. Um, more along the lines of we need to actually um, see some justice done rather quickly because uh, I've lost 10 pounds. I didn't weigh that much to begin with. So um, <laughs> I, I think we may be dying. Might actually be uh, of worth to get this done and to hell the con consequences. Fair enough. Take that hero point. You guys should see the board. I have assured it. As you guys make your way towards the temple complex, there's a smaller step pyramid on which uh, Kappa, with this strange, like, grayish ball cut appropriate, given the growth of, on their heads, hangs down. It sits on the temple with its legs, like, at like a 45 degree angle, just like kicked back against a rock as. Four troops of Kappa, probably about 150 Kappa, all just, like, in their primal Aquin that uh, Farron can understand. Just, praise me to mighty Kappa God! As they bow back and forth, they haven't seen you yet, as you guys make your approach. I also have Aquin. Okay, it's a very primal, so it's not quite something you can understand. It's, uh... I like, also have Aquin. It's like five steps back from our English to ye old English, and then like take that back farther. So you can probably get like there in general saying worshipy kind of things, while the guy up top. Yep, that check definitely reinforces that. I can do our linguistics real too. Okay. I also have Aquin because linguistics is five for me. I've just. Linguistics is one of those things that both me and Tiki like to have a lot of. That's, yeah, it's a good check. So you guys can interpret that when the Kappa were referring to their gods, they were referring to another Kappa, and that Kappa sits just squat up on this temple, eyes closed, just reveling in the worship it receives. There are, in addition, I won't put, um, them, I won't put them on the board... But there are several, like, up that little step pyramid, there's probably, like, 15 or 20 little blue bodies that have been not pitened, but that's the word I'm going to use. Pitened, arm, arm, leg, leg at a 45 degree angle to make, like, a jumping jack pose. They're a little more buff than the Gripply you saw before, and it dawns on you that these are probably the warriors that were spoken of when uh, you guys... Yep. Um, unless, uh, unless Taras says something specific, I'm going to, um, before combat, pick up a rock, cast Deeper Darkness on it, and throw it into the center. Um, wait, I'm just gonna hold up my hand. Just right quick. So, we see the warriors... What are they doing again? Their bodies are displayed on the sides of the step oh. pyramid, stabbed in, almost like a, like the dissecting a frog pose. That kind of thing. Um, alright then. I'm just gonna... Looks to Anru. So you know how they say fire is the most destructive of elements? 
Darkness is my de- uh, personal destructive element. I'm just going to, like, snap, and a fireball's going to form in my hand. Okay. Because I have fireball now, because I am a good third level, because I am a good fifth level wizard. Yes, you are. I have to I have to double check a thing. It has nothing to do with, okay, it's from Wright Publishing. It turns out that according to Wright Publishing, uh, the Kappa are worthy of their own sorcerer bloodline. Well done, guys. Well done. Interesting. I, I did never think I would see that as I'm pulling the stats up for Kappa. Okay. So I'm hearing a surprise round. Yes. Let's, uh, you don't need to make stealth checks. I would, definitely I would, not I would tell Hero and Farron, I would tell Hero and Farron to retreat though. Okay, fair enough. Farron does, whoop, that was you. Like, like, I will say to Hero, just be ready to grab me in case we need to retreat. He nods and gallops Kinda up like, down the hill. like, like, I hate it, but I'm a, um, I'm not trained to fight on horseback. My character is yeah. not a horseback. No, it makes um, sense. Tarask, character. after you throw that, I'm casting Deeper Darkness. If you see it go down, then I'm in trouble. Understood. Okay. So um, all four of those Kappa troops are definitely in range for a, uh, like, the fireball could hit all four of yeah, them. Yeah, 20-foot radius spread, mm-hmm. and um, it would deal per caster level, so that'd deal 5d6 worth of damage. Right. What's my but, uh, save DC? 18, then. 18? Be your, uh, or, you know, spell level's 3, mods 5. Okay. Let me just check real quick. I thought I might have grabbed something that made my DC a bit higher. I might have. Okay, so what happens is, because I'm sure you're not in the 20s yet, unless you had, like, spell focus evocation, the 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock both fail their saves and will take damage and a half. 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock pass their saves. And since, again, they're troops, they're all, like, especially because right now they're not prepared for what's going on, they are unable to react and will take full damage. 15 okay. points of fire damage. All right, fair enough. As that happens... Uh, both of you make a perception check to Rusk with disadvantage, followed by a d6. Oh, for Pete's sake. Uh, all right, one, two. Okay, okay. that's still good, still and solid. One. That was less solid. Okay, so as that happens, Tarask encants, and they hear you because you don't have silent spell, I imagine, and you have to say the spell loudly. And mm-hmm. the, and the, the also the explosion, <laughs> and several of the kappa outright just die horrendous horrendous deaths. And in addition to that, you see as they hit the ground, they they're not real big. They're probably about the size of like a human's finger. Apparently, they were living in the kappa's like head bowls, little. Like, as the water as the water dumps out onto the ground, occupying the squares where the troops did. Though, of course, they take damage. Of little tiny leeches that you both can rationalize out couldn't feed on the kappa because there's probably like a plate at the bottom or like bone that they couldn't leech onto. This is probably some kind of like. These are little more advanced troopers that would like throw these onto their victims because that many leeches at once is deadly to anybody. Ew. In addition, in addition, this guy in a burst of arcane energy as he stands up ceases to be Kappa. Instead, you see this thing. It looks like a it looks kind of cat-ish. In appearance, it's wearing very, very, very fine robes. Well, and it's uh, it has in place of arms on each side of its body a total of six just vibrantly colored vipers pierce out where its arms would be, and its mouth opens as and a forked tongue kind of like lolls out of it. I think I have true speech. I don't have true speech, but I am smart enough to know what a Drown Noble is. I'm going to play support uh, quickly. Oh, before we go into combat, I would have uh, a distance back, like before we even got to the temple, would have cast Mage Armor on both me and Onru. Okay. 
because that lasts for five hours now, so I would have gone ahead and just like cast that like when we were How getting close to the temple. That's a plus four armor bonus, your AC. All right, I'll be right back. Go fast. So looking at Anru in 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 a undercommon as it like ceases to be a kappa and becomes this thing. Well, seems my time as god of the land has been spoiled by. And as it l- looks at you, it leans forward, and as it does so, the snakes of its arms, they all kind of like point forward and out to look at you, and this is around the time you notice the snake's heads are inverted, where you would expect to see, like, eyes on top, jaw on bottom. It's jaw on top, eyes on bottom, as if it's upside down. A wildling. Two wildlings have come for sacrifice. Good. You! Get them! Tiki wanted to cast the Deeper Darkness, I believe. I did. Tossed oh. it on the rock in the center. Gotcha. What's the radius of it? 60 foot radius, so 120 foot uh, diameter. So basically that whole middle part. The entire battlefield, yes. Because it's 100 foot to me, from me to the dude, and I cast, I put it in the center of the, the four group of uh, Kappa. So the dude on the stairs is covered. Everybody is covered. Okay. Understood. In that case, we will take initiative. Okay, you are top of the initiative, Andrew. Everyone is blinded as the darkness rock. <laughs> okay. Um, because of my feats, I no longer uh, have any kind of movement uh, penalty for being in darkness. I okay. have uh, blind sight, so I don't uh, trip on anything. And um, I've so, already checked the distance from me to him. It's 100 feet. Okay. And I have 110 movement. Okay, you're good. You can reach the thing. With that uh, swift action stance. Yep. Um, and we're going to go into it. Uh, quick draw for the bl- uh, double bladed scythe. Okay. Steel flurry strike, anyway. Okay, gotcha. So roll these one at a time. So I am flat footed to you. As you get a little closer, you can hear like a. As. Uh, you move within five feet of this thing's scent, and it can detect you, but it can't... It has it has a penalty to hit you. It knows you're square, though. So, also, I have... I think I have Uncanny Dodge. Doing a quick... No, I don't have Uncanny Dodge. Okay, so the 25 just hits. The 12 is rolled with disadvantage, and then roll a d6 again. The 26 does connect. 19 and 15 points of damage as you swing into this thing. It seems to, like... You definitely hit it. You're aware of where it is through, I guess, like your study through the monastery. You're able to, like, you can almost see it in your mind's eye, and you spin forward and one to the thing. But as it hits, the the attack, like, hits the creature's flesh, and, like, it slides off a little bit. Okay, then in that case, it moves to me. Make a will save, actually, real quick, if you would. Okay, that passes. So as you get a little closer to this thing, you can feel something poke into your mind almost like as if like someone took a like a chisel and hammer and started trying to like break into it you're able to push it off and now this thing is going to it has sense it knows where it is it's not going to move more than 10 feet let's get a five foot step back then it has to make a i need to roll percentage dice because there's a 50 percent missed chance to target your square I'm cool, but I'm not as cool as I was hoping I would be. I can cast Magic Missile. This creature can, in fact, Magic Missile the Darkness. So it's a less than 50. So it doesn't penetrate the darkness, and you would see this in some kind of like black and white Anru. But as it moves back, there's a like a hissing noise that has a really deep, then high-pitched, then deep, then high-pitched vibrato as a beam of light gray from your point of view energy fires and misses pretty wild like it would have hit your head if your head was five feet over from where it was and okay understood that's all it has the kappa oh i shouldn't target tarask they can't really i feel like they kind of just stumble around they can hear the sounds of combat they can't see those things those things have a move speed. They have blind sight. That's relevant. Okay. They don't move very far, so they're gonna 
Onru can see the leeches begin crawling your direction. Actually, I, I'm a swarm. This one's going to crawl towards this Kappa, who's basically unaware of it, pending a reception check. Yeah, they got nothing. They are going to basically just mill around in place. Did Taras get back? I see him logging into defense. I am back. Fans. All right, roll initiative with disadvantage, then roll the d6. Again? Oh, for Pete's sake. You rolled a one on that d6. What was the d6? What? I thought, okay. It was a 50-50 chance that you have to roll for it again. Yeah. Ew, okay. That's Basically, simple. if you if you succeed the 50-50, you don't have to roll disadvantage on the next roll. I figured it out. Aww. Yeah. Ew. Okay, fair enough. In that case, it is Tarask's turn. You can hear the Kappa fumbling around in the darkness as a uh, this whole board is covered in darkness, including where Tarask is. Yeah, you don't see much of anything at all. Just the sounds of Kappa. Robber, 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 robber. Um, gonna do the robber, 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 robber fireball in the same exact place. Okay. And just, I would need I, you to roll percentage dice. What do I need to roll? Because you're targeting a square and you're blind. Okay, that does hit. That's good enough for me. And for the rules is written as well. You fire the fireball and you're, you're basically just pointing blind into the darkness at this point. More so knowing, I think it's just more so like, okay, I remember I fired here. Yeah, that, so I, I was getting, out. I was getting there. Yes, I was. And now I will roll reflex saves. 12 damage, not as good. The cap, uh, well, one of them's taking double. That's enough to incinerate that one. That one, Oof. that one is going to take 24 had taken. So that's enough to incinerate that one too. And leeches. No bypasses. Yeah, well, I mean, things add to that. I'm just still looking at it. They need a plus. They need a plus five to equal my DC on that one. That's a thirteen. Okay, so they have a plus six. So they take not half but full. So as they take twenty four points of damage, as the fire kabooms, it's it doesn't illuminate the darkness. The darkness is magical, but there's like a quick bit of heat. Of course, on room behind her can see. But the fireball's gone off, and now all four of those Kappa swarms are very dead, but in their place are swarms of leeches. If that is all, it does pass to Onru, if you're done, Tarask. Tarask is done, yes. Alrighty, pass it to Onru. Um, in the beginning of my turn, five foot step. Okay. Um, I would... So, all right, I'm trying to think of how I'm doing this. Okay. Today. All right, it's going to be my uh, my accelerist flurry with an extra key point and a haste, and um, trying to think. All right, no, nothing else I have does anything. However, I am going to spend a point of key, not momentum, but key, mm. and I get deadly strike damage on all these hits. Okay, fair enough. How many attacks in total? Uh, that would be four. Okay, so then the last one is rolled with disadvantage, then roll a d6. A 30 hits, a 27 hits, a 31 hits, a 30 becomes a 20 and misses. So four hits, one miss. One, one almost hit, one like... Should have been the thing's neck, but you, like, lean forward as it falls back and, like, you hear the sound of six distinct serpents, like, hiss laughing near your face. And that's precision damage there? Yeah, that's precision damage on top. Nice. Okay, I understood. Well, yeah, it is precision, precision damage. It's deadly strikes. Okay. In that case, it is, if that's all it does pass to me... This is a pre-generated monster. Um, Maybe they were smart no, enough to... No, it is. The last thing I'm going to do is a free action yell back to Tarask. There are still leeches in the dark. Yes. Well, I can see and you can't. You didn't know the knowledge. Yeah. I assumed. <laughs> All right, so it passes to me. As you swing your scythe into it some of them kind of like almost as if you would like hit rubber they kind of bounce off a little bit as your flurry continues to flurry and just enough wildling you will be sacrifice 
The kappa will feast upon your flesh. And I'm just going to roll a 10s. It needs to be a 5 or better. Is the yeah, easy. I have 30 AC. Good. Happy for you. So first attack, I have... How many do I have? I have a lot. 7. So I get 1. 2. Bleh. Bleh. This is for the 10s place. 3. Six, seven. Okay, duly no. Well, that could be like a seventeen. Hang on. Yeah, it's a fourteen. Okay, so I get one, two. Sadness. Three, four of my seven attacks as this thing leans in, and the snakes all just kind of lunge at you with their heads upside down, biting almost like in an uppercut motion to try to dig in. I add that, so I'm going to roll five of these. I think I lost count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so f this is plus 14. This is 26 and misses. That's a thing. Okay. Uh, it fumble. I did, yeah. It provokes from honor, and then misses. Third attack is a 17. Fourth attack is a also 17. So some of them come a little close. Some of them might actually like touch you, but then slide off. The like, rather than touch you, they actually they kind of like, they contact the mage armor and just poof, back. Frustrated, the creature takes a five foot step behind it, moving down the other side of the step pyramid. And it passes to the leeches. These two are going to begin to climb in the direction of the closest movement they can sense. I want them to take the run action, but they're mindless. So they're just going to take a move action. That seems more fair to ask. So the entire field is covered in darkness? Yes, the entire battlefield has been deeper darkness. And it was definitely, like, at best, on your best day here in the rainforest, it's dim light. So it's very, very black. This is fine. This is this fine. Thing, this thing has 10 hits. I'm glad I did it. No, no, that is perfectly fair. But this is fine. This is fine. Suddenly, before your very eyes, Taras turns into a dog with a fine hat, sitting in a house. It is on fire. Um. DM gets a hero point. Okay, thank you. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> You've doomed us all. You've doomed us all. For this round, I'm just going to cast me a shield. And if that's all, it passes back to Onru. Unless you have a move action. No. I'm okay. just going to cast shield. I have major armor, so that's a plus six in total. Yep, that is how that one works. Very good. 28 hits, 30 hits. The 18 and 23 miss. It's not looking good. You can... You don't see it so much as you feel it, and the attacks continue to kind of slide and bounce off it. Who did you say was a sacrifice? You! And if that is all, I'm going to pass to me. Man, I have so many attacks, and they're so good, but I can't really do that much. I literally have Magic Missile, and it might be my best choice to just back off and Magic Missile the darkness. I have a lot of spells, none of them are to spell magic or light. It was bad. That's fine. That's okay. We're going to five a step over here, and we're going to seven percentage dice rolls for seven attacks and a full attack. First one is a 95 and is able to hit. Second one is a 43 and misses. Third one is a 91 is we have a chance. Oh, that one does two. Uh, this is the fifth one. Wah, wah. Oh, yeah, this is a 20, 20. That sucks. Sixth one. This is why Drown Nobles are good, kids. Right here. So, so I get four chances to hit you at a plus 14 to hit. As it, like, it moves forward and continues just, like, hissing and spitting in the upside-down snakes. Come at ya! Uh, so 28, which misses, because I need a 30. So I need to roll 16 or better. All of them fail to connect. It slides in. I don't even have to spell magic. I'm disappointed in this thing. One of them, again, contacts mage armor and just... <sighs> as it, like, spits a little bit of slightly darker gray in the, like, the dark vision mind's eye. As it is still ineffective, these guys continue to make their way up. 
These guys continue to crawl into Rosk's direction. I mean, you can't see that. Don't metagame. Can I hear them? Um, make a perception check. Sure. And... Mm-hmm. Echo location. Should have got a bath familiar. 21. Yeah, you can... They're really, really quiet, but they're not really trying to, like make themselves so there's a squish and a squish and a squish and a squish moving your direction a lot of them of course mostly you hear the sounds of snakes hissing with vibratos on top of that pyramid as onru defiantly cuts at the thing my turn yep you're up you say they take one and a half times damage from aoe right yeah i'm gonna try and hit this group of leeches on the right with a molten orb okay does molten orb uh, pick a square uh, effect ranged attack, so yes. Okay, real percentage dice. Molten Orb is like a baby fireball, but you like Kamehameha out. Yeah. Yeah, if he, Boom! If he misses it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that's, that's a, a... It's not a critical, because it's not a natural 20, but you definitely hit the square. <laughs> yeah, it's a reflex. Or, yeah, it's a reflex, reflex attack for me, so it's a splash weapon, essentially. Okay. So That is a good spell. Ranged weapon... Range. Whoop. 12? To target my normal AC? Yeah. Oh, or touch. Yeah. No, that's. Target my touch. Uh, a 12. Yeah. Uh, a 12 does not hit the touch. It You fire it, and it, like. There's probably a little bit of, like. Me- not mechanically, well, yeah, but, like, like flavor wise, there's probably a couple leeches are, like, cooked by the heat, but it fires over top of them. You still need to roll a reflex save. Okay. Because it's a splash weapon. Direct hit deals 2d6, and then it's a splash weapon on top of it, so everything within 5 feet of it takes 1d6 fire damage. Okay, so the the square is... The square is arbitrary for the d8, because there's no d8 anywhere that would, like... The splash would hit another one. But here's my reflex save. That's a d12. That wasn't my reflex save. (laughs) 25. Uh, Yeah, that succeeds, so you only take... uh, one point of fire damage. Okay. And, uh, fire damage. Continue on taking fire damage for three more rounds. Or two more rounds. Okay. Set three on them. Weird. Understood. If that's all, it passes to Onru. Oh, and it is a, just a ranged attack, which wouldn't have made any difference. Yeah, my touch is the same as my AC. Mm. Very dexy. I'm much like Onru. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Wait, oh, I was also going to try and move away from those things very quick. Oh, oh okay, like, fair oh. enough, good. Okay. Just going to move away from uh, them. Just make an like, acrobatic oh. check. Ah, uh, crud monkeys. I rapidly crud scroll up. Monkeys. Crud monkey! Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Zero point. I, okay. So what I'm going to say is uh, it's just one flat re-roll, because that was your disadvantage roll, but use your points, it'll be fine. So roll a d6, you are able, you don't fall on your face. Uh, you begin moving, and you like you lean a little too far forward, but your tail reflexively comes forward, and like, or rather your tail like instinctively grabs a bit of like vine and pulls you back up, and you're able to make that square, and now it's Andrew's turn. Doing what I'm doing, because, you know, that seems to be working okay. Sure. So... First flurry, second. Second's a disadvantage. Uh, so okay. the second misses, first, first hits. Then All roll right. a d6. I'll put a d6 down real quick as you're clicking on other things. Okay, 28 hits. All right, and then the uh, that was, the third one was key point, and then this one is uh, paste. Okay, that one's rolled and a disadvantage. Keeping... Okay, go ahead and roll damage. How much? Uh, two attacks hit. I, don't, I didn't hear how many. Two attacks hit? Yeah. And I'm getting low on momentum, but I'm still using it. Okay, that is enough to flavor that kill. Um, as I'm striking, I'm using great uh, scything motions, and I basically say, and now you become the sacrifice. Up one side, uh, cutting off all the snakes. Up other side, cutting off all the snakes. Have fun in the afterlife. Cut them straight down the center. Fair enough. The snakes, like, cutting at the snakes, cutting at the snakes, cutting at the center resolves. In a mechanical sense, it goes to dying. It's not outright killed. It falls to the ground, bleeding and hissing and 
it it switches over from the undercom and it was speaking to do you speak infernal yes okay so then in infernal just this means nothing their time has come you will all burn and it kind of just like and i'll see you when you come back i will roll to stabilize I, uh that's that's These, an infernal. I responded in infernal, and gotcha. I'll see you when you come back. Does Tarasca understand infernal? Uh, let me check. As of uh, uh, as of current, I have celestial, infernal, abyssal, and yes. all of the elementals. Right, fair yes, enough. I do understand infernal. And you understand that she stabilizes. Well, they stabilize. Uh, initiative is off. I'm going to take initiative off because these guys still are like hungry and want to eat you, but they're not moving very fast. And they're not like, they're not hostile. They're basically an environment effect that's particularly potent. What do, team? Mm-hmm. What is going on? What that thing? Dropping say? darkness. What okay. that thing? See about? Oh, God, that's a lot of that's leeches. That's a lot of leeches. Ew. They continue to move Ew. your direction, but it's not hard to like dodge them. Ew. I have, nasty, a, I have a pretty good swim speed. Things. Swim speed of like 30, I think. Catch me in water, I'll kill you dead. But my move speed is 5 feet. So unfortunately, I don't get to do a D3 of strength and con damage and dexterity drain. Leech swarms are one of the strongest things in Pathfinder First Edition. <laughs> slightly <laughs> slightly under slightly under Deeper Darkness. Yeah, it's stabilized. So the next question becomes... Uh, Barring magical healing, it's probably going to stay down, and it's it looks humanoid enough that the leeches that haven't attached themselves to the gripply bodies or that aren't, like, chasing you guys Walking Dead style around the pyramid may eventually come to this thing. It's like, so would you like to tell us why people and things keep messing with us specifically? It's stabilized, but it is unconscious. I can cast okay. uh, Cure Light Wounds on it. Uh, no. 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 Is it an evil thing? If you, if, oh, it is extremely evil. It's speaking Infernal. It is a, uh, well, I, I didn't assume that that would demon. automatically mean it would take... D- can I roll uh, Knowledge Planes to see if this thing would be damaged? If, yeah, you can roll Knowledge Planes. If you magically heal it and bring it up to, uh, to positive hit points, it can start attacking again. Well, I thought you wanted to talk to it as well. So, so what happens is oh, you, no. you roll the knowledge of the planes, and uh, by the power vested in me by powers of protections and the dragon empires, we must move you farther up. Ugh, I have to do a scroll. Tarask approaches the thing as, at this point, most of the leeches would like turn around and they latch onto the bodies of the fallen gripply warriors. It's, it's hard to say what this thing is as you get closer to it, because it looks kind of like your first thought is cat folk. Its face looks kind of, sort of feline. Its eyes have that, like, slit pupil. It's really, like, lithe. But it's it's the snake arms that tick you off to what it is. Because, like I said, the heads are upside down. Much like a Rixasha's hands are turned over. This is a lesser Rixasha, what's known as a Mirai. Of course one of these things has followed us here. I say just, like, looking at it. So this is like the lesser, this is like the baby version of the thing that tried to kill us back in the box canyon? Or no, no, the no. no this, that the, has nothing to do with that. This is Jurassic's oh. first encounter with Rixasha. You um, would, you'd know, uh, it's a native outsider. It was born here on the material plane, and they possess the powers of fiends, but uh, they're usually like the reincarnations of manipulators, traitors, um, tyrants, actually, things like that. I, I don't think they are native. They are? I swear, they swear are. to God, it's a native outsider. Oh. Huh. I, yeah, I was surprised yeah. at first, too, because I thought it was just going to be outright destroyed, but it's a native outsider. Well, no, I've, I've actually been in several games before where once they were killed, they went to the uh, the orig- their original plane and came back, so I'm maybe thinking about Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, yeah, you probably might be. But these guys, like, by and large, they are, they're so... Like, after dying violent deaths, these particularly, like, hedonistic and selfish tyrants, uh, their spirits are so tied to their worldly possession. In the case of this one, it was probably some kind of, like, humanoid who was ruling over these kappas, and it was reborn as a fiend. As a cat god. As a cat. As a god of the kappa, which isn't much, but it's, it's a... 
Everybody wants that hill of beans. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, that's also... It had 10 attacks. This thing was pretty darn dangerous. It, it didn't have 10 attacks. It had 7. I rolled some of the dice a couple times for a 10 splice. Yeah, these guys are real good. It uh, The bites don't do a lot of damage, but they confuse you, and they have a... It kind of functions like a beholder, because each one of those... Uh, each one of those... Uh, Hands can shoot out energy bolts that do various damage and they can burn you or sicken you or nauseate you or stagger you or stun you or knock you prone. That's cool. And it has a All lot right. of spells. It just none of them. I was really, real hoping this thing had a dispel magic. <laughs> Does not. Looking over to Tarask. Good job with the fireballs. No, no, you have that trick. Eh. As much as people like to give trouble to fire and it's role in destruction. Destruction is still an integral part of the life cycle that all living creatures go through. Mm. You need to break something down to use it to build something new. And I will note also, to, to set a precedent, I'm going to note that fortunately the, the ground here is really wet, so Tarusk's all of his fire spells don't start a fire. They just, like, yeah. they probably kill some plants, but there's no, like, lingering burn. Okay, are there any remaining Kappa alive? No, they are very dead. There's a lot of leeches, no Kappa. Hmm. There's a lot of dead leeches, too, matter of fact. If this thing recovers, it will relentless. If it has anything like a Raksasha, it will relentlessly come after us. So. Do we want to keep it contained and perhaps maybe later on we could figure out some use for it? Um, well, while it's currently in this body, as long as it doesn't have some form of regeneration, which I do not believe they do, we can delimit, uh, cauterize the wounds, and just take it with us. I mean, at the end of the day, as much as I hate to suggest it, perhaps sooner or later I could learn some sort of binding spell? So it's, Possibly, a, it's a native outsider, so it's not something that could be bound. Oh. Yeah, as it, as it sits, I think our best bet is to hobble it as best we can and take it to the monastery to be disposed of. I would hate to dispose of life, but... Well, it's a fiend. It, it's native to this plane. It has the power yes. of fiends, but it is native to this plane. Yes, but as you said previously, it, in its first life was so evil that it became a fiend. I think we should let more people a little higher up the command chain deal with it. Fair. I'll say. But still, I hate the idea of wasting life. After all, as you could see, we didn't need to go after those troops. No. But what choices did we have two against a hundred? I kind of just like look back to the piles of bodies behind us. I think we had significantly better choices than you think. As Tarask, well, like, we flexes a little bit. Flexes that spell. Had, had we not attacked <laughs> them, would they not have put the leeches on us and weakened us to the point that we could not have fought, and ba fought back? Indeed. That's why, I, that's why you have your tricks and s tactics and I have mine. Good. Well, anyway, uh, I would start trying to bind this thing up with... Uh, uh, rope and whatever cloth we might have. Okay. You guys Probably certainly have, have hemp rope. Long. Yeah, I have like 50 feet of hemp rope. Like, do you have stabilize as one of your cantrips? Uh, oh, wait. You, are, certain... you already said it's stabilized. Yeah, it's stabilized. So, yeah, we're... Well, yeah, I do have to stabilize as a cantrip too, because. You know. uh, but yeah, my, uh, my current uh, objective is basically delim all of it to where it's just a torso cauterize the wounds, gag it, and start taking it with us. Okay. You are definitely able to do so. Nothing stops you. It's... The cutting takes a lot of work, because now that you realize this is some kind of, like, native outsider, there's... You realize there's DR there that you have to, like, push your way through, but eventually you are able to remove... Remove the limbs, cauterize the things. Once I know that, I would actually be using my maneuvers to do it, because I have maneuvers that ignore DR. Oh, nice. Is there a specific kind of DR or just DR in general? Just DR. Oh, it, it goes nice. through a set, a set amount of uh, DR, so unless yours is like a 4 or 5, there's not going to be an issue. It's 10. 
but oh, okay. it's well, able to it's able to get through quite a bit of it. But you are certainly able to do so as you guys begin heading away from uh, this place. Actually, another thing to note is there's definitely a lot more of these ruins to be explored. This is just a little like side step pyramid that had been built up. Where like there's yeah. a, there's a whole humongous complex, intelligent humanoid minds. Well, that that's that's kind of rude of me to say. Uh, non tribal, like people who are not from this part of the rainforest that weren't a Riksasha probably haven't seen this in like years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And years. It's a huge archaeological discovery. Um, do you have heal trained currently? Throw? Yes, I do. I do have heal. I have five ranks in heal, nonetheless. Would you mind rolling a couple of heal checks to uh, try to discern whether or not our current um, poisoned state would have us enough time to to uh, explore further, or if we should leave? I rolled a 30 to ascertain that. Okay, so I won't tip the meta, but I will tip... Uh... Both of you, like I said, you've lost 10 pounds overnight, and you're beginning to, even as you roll that trust, you feel kind of, like, you feel a little woozy. Anytime either one of you tries to think or do anything, like, incredibly involved, it, like, it's real hard for you to keep focus, and a lot of times you just kind of have to, like, bite the bullet and push. As far as the progression, it's definitely progressed from what it was before it Back in its earlier stages, it was it was pretty uh, uh what's the word benign. It hit yeah. he it hit he a harder than it hit you two for sure. But now you guys are starting to get to the point where he was. Uh, if I must be honest with you, I do not think we have the time nor the fortitude to continue on fighting a disease to continue exploring this. You know, I am a scholar at heart, but even I must admit when we need to move quickly for healing that it, I myself do not have I, the ability to apply. It does seem to become a pressing I, nature, yeah. Yeah, if, I, I agree. That's the reason I had left it up to you, because I knew you would want to explore the place, but I personally believe we should leave us with mu much haste. I want to, but we need to live more than we need to explore. If nothing else, we can go to the monastery and seek out some of the students of the school, the masters, and see if they'd come with us to help explore this area. More uh, I experienced archaeologists, not adventurers, yeah. but scholars that would know these ruins better than we would off the top of our heads. Sure, yeah. sure. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna double check that the being is gagged properly, and then take it with us, okay. and we're leaving. Alrighty, fair enough. I'm just, I'm just gonna whistle for Hero and Farron. And Hero and Farron ride back. Farron like perched squarely on the forehead, or not the forehead, but like the snout of Hero. As Hero <laughs> rides up, as Hero gets to you, he kind of like looks askance at the bodies of the Gripply warriors that are hanging from this little step pyramid here. That it's the scant. leeches. He looks like sidelong at him. He looks like all. He doesn't he say anything. To kill some. No, 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 at the fallen Gripply warriors, not the Kappa. Oh. Oh. They've basically um, been hung up I as just... trophies, and the leeches are feeding on them. Yeah, I'm... I'll... Yeah, we yeah, should I'd... probably cut down the uh, Gripplies and at least uh, try to arrange them in a uh, less disrespectful manner while trying to avoid the leeches. <laughs> the leeches are easy enough to avoid now that you're aware of them. If, this, no, if you guys were underwater, uh... it'd be a lot harder. Uh... Let me just... I'm just going to look something up right quick. Okay. Because screw it, this might be... This is flavor, but it's important flavor to our characters. And that's the Cafe of Dungeons and Dragons right there. If it wasn't yeah. flavor, it wouldn't be a fun game. There are, yeah. there are those out there who will beg to differ, but after seeing the other side of that mountain... Um, I am going to use... Uh, I'm going to use one of my summon monster at third level spells. Yeah. Or I'm going to use the uh, bestow curse that I have uh, prepared. I'm going to transfer spontaneously cast uh, summon monster three with that. And I'm going to summon one D three plus one. Uh, two earth elementals, two small earth elementals. And they will persist for, um, uh, not just five rounds, but, uh, 
yeah, seven rounds because of the Conjuration School's um, base effect, okay. where I get half of my level added to how long they persist. Mm -hmm. So for seven rounds, I'll just summon these Earth Elementals and ask for their assistance in preparing graves for the Gripply. They are, they're definitely able to do so better than you are because they are living Earth. They just kind of stick yeah. their hand out and pull out a grave. Yeah, I was, I was like, of all the things that could probably help us, let's just literally get the things that are made of Earth to do this for us. The best bulldozer is the bulldozer made of the bull you wish to doze. Yeah, as each grave is done, I would put the Gripply in, arrange its arms in a uh, respectful manner, and then, you know, have them cover it back up if uh, Tarask would tell them. Yep. Yep. Alrighty. They last for long enough that they can pull that off. They make sure I didn't have any gear. Yeah, no, I didn't. I went through a lot. I actually, of mm -hmm. before they disappear in Tyran, I would thank them for their uh, for their service. Or Terran, rather. They they don't say anything back, but you speak in Terran, and they turn in your direction and all at once nod before... I imagine I imagine when one summons an elemental, it's just, it's kind of like, for, from a cleric, the clouds part, and there's like that Kijong's holy symbol is onto the ground and like it is built up from nothing and then as they nod yeah. they just kind of like fold back as if the earth had never been disturbed and that is where we're going to call it for today on thank the you guys second session or all the, oh yeah I was like we got one more as you know because you hang out yeah. that there's one more because if you're watching us on Twitch we go all the way and if you want to see a big 3 hour blurb, it's Sunday nights from 6 to 9 Central Time. But they're coming on YouTube in one-hour spurts as well. Thank you guys for watching. Tiki Ross, thanks for being amazing as always, and we'll see you next time. Say bye, guys. Bye. See you, guys.